seems like this from Japan's 2011 tsunami will happen here in Oregon. That's according to Oregon State University's marine geologist Chris Goldfinger. In fact, it already has happened here back on January 26, 1700. The evidence for this earthquake is, is very, very strong. Off the Oregon coast, there is a subduction zone, which is where the denser oceanic Juan de Fuca plate slides under the North American plate. This area is known as the Cascadia subduction zone. Goldfinger says there are four ways we can prove that a mega earthquake and tsunami occurred along this plate boundary on this day back in 1700. First, sediment deposit readings show evidence of an undersea landslide that occurred over 300 years ago. That would be consistent with a mega earthquake. Second, there are documented tales from North American settlers in Oregon who spoke about the ground shaking and then there being a great wave. Third, there's evidence in Japan from a distant tsunami from that same day. The uh, tsunami from the 1700 earthquake arrived in Japan at a known time because there were written records of it. Uh, you can then back calculate the travel time from Japan to Cascadia and you wind up with January 26, 1700 at about 9 p.m. Fourth. Tree ring data from this ghost forest along the Oregon coast shows that around 1700 they stopped growing and suddenly died, which Goldfinger says would be caused by the land dropping six feet, which flooded the trees with salt water and ultimately killed them. Their marshes would drop, uh, you know, a meter or so, and and uh, a tsunami deposit would come wash over those, and the salt water would then kill the trees in the back parts of the marsh. And so far, the evidence that these, these events happened synchronously across uh, the full length of the Cascadia margin is very strong. Can we calculate the odds of this happening on any given year? Uh, the probability of, a, of an M9 earthquake, the biggest ones, are 10 to, about 10 to 14 percent in 50 years. He walks us through what you would feel step by step. What you would get is about a minute or so of, of relatively light shaking. It would feel like somebody was jackhammering out in the street and you'd be kind of, everybody would be looking around wondering uh, what it was. And then, um, so that light shaking comes from the initial P waves of the earthquake. They travel faster, but they're smaller. And then the S waves, the damaging waves arrive uh, at about a minute or in some cases as much as a minute and a half later. And that's where the real shaking starts to happen. As we're talking about a tsunami wave, are we talking about one large tall wave or is this going to be a series of waves? Uh, no, it's definitely not one large tall wave. Uh, it's not the movie tsunami. It's going to be a series of waves. Uh, they can take up to an hour or sometimes even, even many hours to, uh, to play out. He says Oregon would need to rebuild most of its buildings and bridges to withstand the major earthquake and tsunami. This is where Pedro Lamonico comes in. Last year, I visited Pedro at the Hindel Wave Research Laboratory at OSU. His main focus is to engineer structures in Oregon that are tsunami and earthquake resistant. The houses that are less strong are going to be easier to be destroyed. He says a good first step would be to rebuild the bridges along the coast. And also, any new homes that are built should be built with stilts. And what happens when you have a building that is elevated where the uh, space underneath the structure allows the water to go through? This also means that businesses such as schools and hotels that lie in the tsunami inundation zone should be built with an evacuation area on the roof where people can go in the event of a tsunami warning. For other infrastructure, Goldfinger says it's not too late to get prepared. This is, this is a solvable problem. You know, we've discovered we have this big problem that's sort of hanging over us like a black cloud a little bit. Um, but it is, it does have solutions. The solutions are expensive and time consuming and uh, require you know, steady effort to, to resolve. It's a matter of society getting together and, and, you know, hardening the infrastructure, learning the sort of rules of the road for how you deal with these things.